What is up, young chemists? Mr. Rosen here. Uh, today we're going to be talking about limiting reactant stoichiometry. Limiting reactant stoichiometry. Now, limiting reactant stoichiometry is really mass-to-mass -mass stoichiometry, but uh, you have to do a little bit more. So I would encourage you to watch the video on mole-to-mole -mole and mass-to-mass -mass stoichiometry if you're a little bit rusty on that before uh, diving into this. But uh, the idea behind limiting reactant stoichiometry is that uh, when you have a chemical reaction occurring, uh, you know, in a sort of, I'd say, like the most typical uh, chemical equation, you'll have maybe two reactants, um, and they're interacting with each other. And as the reactants are getting used up, as the reactants are decreasing, the products are increasing, right? Now... The reactants get used up in different amounts or different ratios, and that's why we have these, ratio, these coefficients in front of the balanced equation. So like for this equation, for every one mole of nitrogen, three moles of hydrogen gets used up. And limiting reactant stoichiometry is all about finding out which of the reactants is going to run out first. Okay? So... When you have the reaction happen, you'll have some amount of one reactant and some amount of the other reactant. They'll be getting used up based on the mole ratios and the balanced equation, and one of them is going to run out first. Okay, now, it is theoretically possible that both run out at the exact same time, but it's much, much, much more likely that one of them is going to run out first. And when one of the two reactants runs out, you can't form any more product, right? This is saying we take one of these and three of these and we get two of those. And then you take one of these and three of these and you get two of those. But as soon as the nitrogen runs out, it doesn't matter if you have a huge amount of hydrogen still sitting there, you can't form any more product. Whenever the first reactant runs out, that limits how much product can be formed. The reactant that runs out first is called the limiting reactant. The reactant that is still left over after the limiting reactant is consumed is said to be an excess. That's the excess reactant. You have more than enough of it to react all of the other. So limiting reactant stoichiometry is figuring out if you know how much of both reactants you have, which one is going to run out first, meaning which one's the limiting reactant, and whichever one's the limiting reactant is going to determine how much product you can make. In previous problems, mole-to-mole -mole and mass-to-mass -mass stoichiometry problems, they give you information about one reactant and maybe you're solving for a product. When that happens, you are just assuming that there was an excess of the other reactant. Right? You're just sort of ignoring the other one. You're assuming that there's more than enough of the other one. You're assuming that the other reactants are not going to run out before the one that they give you. So let's, let's just get into some examples, and uh, hopefully this will um, kind of clear itself up as we do these uh, practice problems. So here we have, this is called the synthesis of ammonia. We have nitrogen plus hydrogen giving us NH3, which is called ammonia. And you can see this is a balanced equation, so we have uh, a coefficient of 3, a coefficient of 2. And there's nothing in front of the nitrogen which means that's the same as a coefficient of 1. Okay, we don't write coefficients of 1, but the fact that it's there means there's one of it. So the question says, 100 grams of nitrogen gas reacts with 30 grams of hydrogen gas, according to the equation above. Which reactant will be limiting, meaning which will run out first, and what amount of product can be formed? Ammonia is the product. Now, immediately it's tempting to go, oh, we have 100 grams of nitrogen and only 30 grams of hydrogen, so, you know, the hydrogen's got to run out first, right? There's only 30 grams of it. Eh, that's not necessarily true. Okay, the hydrogen might run out first, but we can't tell that just by looking at how many grams we have. We have to first turn them into moles. And even when we have moles, we still can't tell which one will run out first because we have a uh, balanced equation with different mole ratios. So we actually really have to do the math. You're not going to just like flip, your, flip a coin and, and hope that you get it right. You're going to actually solve. You're going to figure it out. Which one's going to run out first? 
So step one, convert the masses of both reactants into moles. So 100 grams of N2, we're going to turn that into moles. One mole of N2 is some number of grams. Okay, so the molar mass of nitrogen is 14.01, and we have two of them, so that's 28.02. So if we divide by the molar mass, grams will cancel, and we'll be left with here moles of N2. So I'll just punch that, uh, punch that into the calculator here. Uh, 100 divided by 28.02. Uh, 3.57 uh, approximately, uh, that's moles of N2. And then we have 30 grams of H2. One mole of H2 is some number of grams. Hydrogen's 1.01, and we have two of them, so that's 2.02. .02. So if we do this, grams will cancel out, and we'll be left with moles of H2. So if we take uh, 30 and divide it by 2.02, uh, 14.85 ish. So I'm just jotting these down. We'll actually do calculations with them. So immediately you should see that look, we started with 100 grams of nitrogen, and that's about 3.5 moles. We started with 30 grams of hydrogen, and that's about 14, almost 15 moles. So immediately things have flipped, right? The one, the one that we have way less grams of is actually way more moles. But even though we have more moles and this is less moles, now does that mean that this one's going to run out first? Not necessarily. We still have to do the math. We still have to do the solving. So step one, we converted them into moles. Now what you're going to do is figure out to react all of one reactant, how much of the other do you need? The equation says that for every one mole of nitrogen, you need three moles of hydrogen. So to react all of this, how much hydrogen do you need? Or you could think to react all the hydrogen, how much nitrogen do you need? It doesn't matter which one you choose. Either way, you'll come to the same answer. So step two says, uh, Use the mole ratios from the balanced equation to determine which reactant is limiting. So, you know, which one are we going to use? It doesn't matter. I'll, I'll, I'll use the top one here. We'll just say uh, 3.57 moles of N2. And this is a mole-to-mole -mole stoichiometry problem. I'm saying, okay, to react all of my nitrogen, how many moles of the other reactant do I need? The other reactant is hydrogen. So I put H2 on top and I have N2 on bottom, and I'm going to use the mole ratio from the balanced equation, okay? In front of N2 was nothing, so that's a 1, and in front of H2, there's a 3. So my mole ratio is 3 over 1. So if I take this number times, uh, times 3, so I'm going to have uh, 100, which is divided by 28.02, right? So this number is going to get uh, div uh, multiplied by 3, all right? That's going to give me 10 point, about 10.7. Uh, this is now moles of H2 needed, okay? What I have up here... This is what I have, and this is what I have, right? I have 100 grams of nitrogen, which is this many moles. I have 30 grams of hydrogen, which is this many moles. So this is how many I have of each. What I just solved for down here is, was I said, to, so, to react all of the nitrogen, how much hydrogen is needed? About 10.7 moles of hydrogen is needed. Compare what I need to what I have. This says to react all the nitrogen, I need about 10.7 moles of hydrogen. I have almost 15 moles. So do I have enough hydrogen to react all the nitrogen? Yes. Okay. What this is saying is all of the nitrogen is going to react 
using up 10.7 moles of hydrogen, and I'm still going to have hydrogen left over, right? I'm still going to have like about four moles of hydrogen left over. So that means N2 is going to run out first. That means that N2 is limiting. N2 is our limiting reactant. It's going to run out first. Okay, now, just for the sake of, of, you know, kind of proving my point here, what if we started with the other number? What if we did it the other way around? What if by chance we just started the other way? So I have uh, about 14.85 moles of H2. And I said, okay, to react all of the hydrogen, how much nitrogen do I need? So I put N2 on top and H2 on bottom. This time, my mole ratio is 1 over 3. So if I do that, this is going to tell me how many moles of N2 are needed. Okay, so if I take 14.85 divided by 3, I get 4.95 moles of N2 are needed. So this, uh, this means to react all of the hydrogen, I need this many moles of nitrogen. And how many moles of nitrogen do we actually have? that much. Not enough, right? It says to react all the hydrogen, I would need almost five moles of nitrogen. I don't have that much, okay? So that tells you that the nitrogen is going to run out before all the hydrogen gets used up. So either way, whether you start with this one or you start with this one, either way, nitrogen is going to run out first. Either one, either way, nitrogen is your limiting reactant, okay? It's all about comparing what you have to what you need to react all of one reactant. So this is how we figure out what the limiting reactant is. Now, once you know what the limiting reactant is, you're going to use the limiting reactant in order to solve for your product. Okay? So, uh, use the limiting reactant to calculate the amount of product that can be formed. So at this point, it's just a regular mass-to-mass -mass problem, okay? Of these two reactants, 100 grams of nitrogen and 30 grams of hydrogen, right? Which one are we going to use? Well, nitrogen is limiting, right? Nitrogen is limiting, so this is what we're going to use, 100 grams of nitrogen. That's our reactant, and we're solving for product. So this is now just a, just a regular mass-to-mass -mass stoichiometry problem, right? 100 grams of nitrogen turn it into moles of nitrogen, right, 28.02 grams, so we already did that, and then you're going from moles of nitrogen to moles of what you're trying to find, which in this case they're asking us about NH3, and what's given is N2, this is moles, this is moles. Based on our balanced equation, there is a coefficient of two in front of NH3, and there's a coefficient of one in front of N2. So this is uh, two over one. So this would convert from grams of nitrogen to moles of nitrogen. Then we convert from moles of nitrogen to moles of NH3, and then we convert from moles of NH3 to grams of NH3. And we do that by multiplying by the molar mass of NH3. Now nitrogen is 14.01, Hydrogen's 1.01, .01. there are three of them, so that's 3.03 plus 14.01 gives you 17.04 grams per mole. This will give you your answer in grams of NH3, and this will be the maximum amount of grams that can be produced by the reaction of those two reactants, right? So the reaction of 100 grams of nitrogen and 30 grams of hydrogen, the maximum amount that you can produce is this number of grams. So 100 divided by 28.02, that is moles of nitrogen, times 2, which is here, that's now moles of NH3, times 17.04, that is now one, we'll say 122 grams of NH3. That's the maximum amount of grams that can be produced by the reaction um, outlined in the example problem, right? We converted from moles of products to grams using the molar mass. 
that was uh, in the last step here. Right. So this is a limiting reactant problem. You're, the difference here, the difference between these problems and regular mass-to-mass -mass problems is you're given an amount for two reactants. In previous problems, you were just given an amount for one reactant, and you assumed that there was an excess of the other. But now, you actually have an amount for both reactants, and you have to figure out which of them is going to run out first, right? Which of them is going to be our limiting reactant? So let's do some more practice problems. This one says, uh, lead 2 nitrate reacts with NaCl according to the following balanced equation. So it's already balanced, which is good. So we have some coefficients in here. 15.5 grams of PbNO3, parentheses 2, reacts with 13.1 grams of NaCl. What's the maximum number of grams of NaNO3 that can be formed? So we have to figure out what the limiting reactant is. So I'm going to take 15.5 grams of PbNO3, in parentheses 2, and I'm going to turn that into moles. Okay, one mole of PbNO3, in parentheses 2, is some number of grams. And this will tell you moles of PbNO3 that you have. Okay, now we do have to add up the molar mass for this. Okay, if you look on a periodic table, Pb is 207, oops, uh, 208.7 and Oops, sorry about that. Let me rewrite this. Uh, two, uh, 207.2. So uh, PB is 207.2. Okay. And then this means we have two nitrogens and six oxygens. So we have nitrogen, which is 14.01 times 2, and then we have 6 oxygens, so that's 16 times 6. So we added those all up. The molar mass is 331.22 grams per mole. Okay, so that's the molar mass of PbNO3, in parentheses 2. So if we take 15.5 and we divide it by that number, we get 0 0.0 four, six, eight. So that's how many moles we have. Now let's look at the other one. 13.81 grams of NaCl. One mole of NaCl. If we add those up, Na is 22.99, Cl is 35.45. If we add those together, we get 58.44 grams per mole. That's the molar mass of NaCl. So if we take 13.81 and we divide it by 58.44, that's 0.236 moles of NaCl. Again, that's what you have. So we just calculated how many moles we have of each. That's it how many moles we have of each. Now, we don't know what the limiting reactant is yet. We can choose either one of these. It doesn't matter which one. I, I have this one in my calculator already, so I'll, I'll just use this one because it's on the bottom. But uh, if you take 0.3, or sorry, 0.236 moles of NaCl, and you say, all right, to react all my NaCl, how much PBNO32 do I need? So I'm just going to use the mole ratios from the balanced equation. NaCl has a 2 in front of it, and PBNO3 has a 1 in front of it. So that's just times 1 half. So if I take this number divided by 2, I get 0 0.118 moles of PbNO3 in parentheses 2 needed 
So let's just pause to look at what I have. To react all of the NaCl, I need this much PbNO3 in parentheses too. Compare what I need to what I have. I only have this much. To react all of the NaCl, I need this much. I don't have nearly this much. Okay? What that means is PbNO32 is going to run out way before all the NaCl does. Okay? That means PbNO3 in parentheses 2 is limiting. That is our limiting reactant. So now that we know it's our limiting reactant, if we're trying to figure out how much product can be made, NaNO3, right? Am I going to use that number or am I going to use that number? I'm going to use the number of the limiting reactant. Okay. So now it's just a regular mass-to-mass -mass problem. And really, I've already done the beginning part of it, right? This beginning part, I'm going to write it out in one string. But you've already done the beginning part, so 15.5 grams of PbNO3 in parentheses 2 times 1 mole of PbNO3 2 is 331.22 grams. So that converts from grams to moles, which we already did. It's this number. But now we're going to go from moles of PbNO3 2 to moles of NaNO3 this is going to be using our mole ratio from the balanced equation in front of NaNO3 we have 2 and in front of PbNO3 uh, 2 we have nothing there so that's the same as 1 oops we still have another step after that so just to kind of show you these steps so far. So we do 15.5 divided by uh, 331.22. That's our moles of PbNO3. And then we take that times 2, and this number, sorry about the glare here, this number, which is 0 0.09, is now moles of NaNO3, and we have to convert that into grams. 1 mole of NaNO3. Now, Na is 22.99, and nitrogen is 14.01. So that 01 and the 99 makes uh, an even number, plus 48. This actually works out to be exactly 85 grams per mole. So if we take our number of moles times 85, we get our answer which is about 7.96 grams of NaNO3. So this is just basically a mass-to-mass -mass stoichiometry problem. We went from grams of PbNO3 to moles of PbNO3. We went from moles of PbNO3 to moles of NaNO3 and then moles of NaO3 to grams of NaNO3. But before we could do that, we had to figure out which of the two was limiting. And to do that, we turned them both into moles and compared what we have to what we would need to react all of the other. So this is limiting reaction stoichiometry. Uh, you figure out which of the two reactants is limiting, and then uh, how much product can be formed. So we'll do some more and, and uh, extension and then maybe sort of an alternative style to solving these problems. So the next question says, zinc reacts with hydrochloric acid according to the following, uh, following balanced equation. So this is balanced. We have a coefficient here. 79.1 grams of zinc reacts with 55.2 grams of HCl. How much product can be formed? In this case, they're focusing on the zinc uh, chloride. So we're going to turn each of these into moles. One mole of zinc. And down here, we're going to have one mole of HCl. Okay. So uh, 
zinc has a molar mass of 65.39 grams per mole and uh, hydrogen's 1.01, .01, chlorine's 35.45, so that's 36.46 grams per mole. So this is going to uh, get us our moles of each. So let's calculate that. So 79.1 divided by 65.39, about 1.21 moles of zinc, and 55.2 divided by 36.46 is about 1.51 moles of HCl. Okay. So this is how much you have of each of them. We just converted them into moles. Now, I need to figure out, to react all of one, how much of the other do I need? Okay. Last time, I did the bottom one, maybe this time we'll do the top one. It doesn't matter which one. So I'm going to choose the one on top. I'm going to say, okay, I have 1.21 moles of zinc. And I want to know how many moles of HCl are needed to react all of my zinc. So I'm just going to use the mole ratio from the balanced equation. Okay, HCl has a 2 in front of it and zinc has a 1 in front of it. So if I take this number times 2, I get 2.42 moles of HCl needed. So this is saying to react all of the zinc, right? Because I have I have 1.21 moles of zinc. To react all of my 1.21 moles of zinc, I need 2.42 moles of HCl. Compare what I need to what I have. I only have 1.51. So this is saying to react all the zinc, I need this much HCl. I only have that much. Do I have enough HCl? No. I don't. That means HCl is going to run out first. That means that HCl is limiting. It's going to run out first. That's my limiting reactant. So now that I know what the limiting reactant is, I can solve for product. So the limiting reactant is HCl. So I'm going to do 55.2 grams of HCl. Now I'm just writing this out again, but really I would normally just start from there because we already did this. 1 mole of HCl over 36.46 grams, right? That would give me moles of HCl, which is this number. I would then go from moles of HCl to what I'm trying to find, which is moles of zinc chloride. Moles of HCl goes on bottom. The equation here is a 1 and a 2, so that's a 1 over 2. And then I would convert from moles of zinc chloride to grams of zinc chloride. One mole of zinc chloride is some number of grams. This will give me my answer. And this answer will come out in, uh, this will be in grams of ZNCO. Um, now, I, I will just plug in the, uh, the molar mass here, zinc, zinc 65.39, and then chlorine is uh, 35.45, and we have two of them. So the molar mass here is 136.29. So let's, uh, let's do this. Uh, the, the full calculation here, we're going to take 55.2 divided by 36.46. That's moles of HCl divided by 2 is now, this is now moles of zinc chloride. Okay, we've done this so far. And now we're taking our moles of uh, zinc chloride times the molar mass of zinc chloride, which is 136.29. We get our answer, which is about 103 grams of zinc chloride. That's the maximum amount of zinc chloride that can form. Okay, so the last part here is just a regular mass-to-mass -mass stoichiometry problem, 
But before we can do the mass to mass stoichiometry problem, we had to figure out, well, are we going to use this number or are we going to use this number? Right? Turns out we're going to use this one because the HCl is going to run out first. Now, it's pretty typical for a problem to be broken down where they go, you know, A, what's the limiting reactant? B, how much product can be formed? So this is, this would be like our answer to A, and this would be our answer to B. But then they also sometimes ask you, like, question here, down here, which uh, it says extension. It says, how many grams of the excess, uh, this is supposed to say excess reactant. Sorry about that. How many grams of the excess reactant remain after the reaction uh, above? So if HCl is the limiting reactant, the excess reactant is zinc. So they're wondering how much of the excess reactant will remain after the limiting reactant is consumed. So what we can do is uh, sometimes, you know, the way that you figure out which is limiting actually will answer this question. But we have to figure out to react all the zinc, or sorry, uh, to react all the HCl, how much zinc is needed. So we actually have to do something like this, but the other way around. Okay, so we're going to say to react all the HCl, how much zinc is needed. So we have uh, 55.2 grams of HCl. And we turn that into moles, right? One mole of HCl is 36.46 grams. And that gives us about 1.51 moles of HCl, right? So we have 1.51 moles of HCl. We're going to figure out uh, to react all of that HCl, um, 1.51 moles of HCl, how much zinc is needed? So we're going to use our mole ratio from the balanced equation, which in front of zinc is a 1, in front of HCl is a 2, so that's 1 over 2. So just in our calculator here, 55.2 divided by 36.46. So this is our number of moles of HCl divided by 2. This is our number of moles of zinc needed. So 0.757 moles of zinc needed. So to react all of the HCl, this is how much zinc is needed. The amount of zinc that we have we actually already found up here, right? This is how much zinc we have. So we have 1.21 moles of zinc. To react all the HCl, we need this much zinc. The question is asking you how much zinc is going to be left over. So really, you can just take 1.21 moles of zinc and subtract 0.757 moles of zinc. what you get is 0.453 moles of zinc remain, right? Because to react all the HCl, this is how many moles of zinc you need. You have 1.21. So how much remains is 0.435. Now, <clears throat> unfortunately, I guess for us, it says how many grams of excess reactant. So we still have to convert our moles of zinc into grams. So 0. Uh, 0.453 moles of zinc, 65.39 grams is one mole of zinc. So we have to convert from moles to grams by multiplying by the molar mass. So I'm just going to take this number times 65.39, and we get uh, 29.6 grams of zinc remain. So
this is how many grams of zinc will remain after the limiting reactant is consumed. So we started with uh, 79 grams of zinc. After all the HCl is used up, we'll still have 29.6 grams of zinc remain. All right. Now, there is another approach to limiting reactant stoichiometry, which I guess I just wanted to show in this video because some students eventually realize this and they go, oh, why don't you just say so? It's so much easier. But I don't think doing two full mass-to-mass -mass stoichiometry problems is easier um, than just figuring out which is the limiting reactant first and then doing a uh, mass-to-mass -mass stoichiometry. But sometimes people teach it this way, so uh, you should be exposed to it too. So we have a reaction, it's already balanced, okay, and it says, what is the limiting reactant when 90 grams of copper reacts with 27 uh, grams of sulfur? So an alternative approach is to just do two mass-to-mass -mass stoichiometry problems, okay? Solve uh, um, Sorry, this, this, uh, this says what's the limiting reactant, blah, 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 blah. And then I guess kind of part two should say, uh, I guess I would probably word it, how much, I guess in grams, sorry, I'm sort of just making this up on the spot, but uh, how many grams of Cu2S can be formed during the reaction above. So really there's two parts. What's the limiting reactant and how much product can you form? Okay, that's really a, how a normal question would go, right? Just like our previous questions. So what you can do is instead of, you know, turning these both into moles and then figuring out how much of one you need to react all of the other and figuring out what the limiting reactant is and then solving for product, you could just do a mass to mass problem going to product for each of them. So you could go from 90 grams of Cu and figure out how many grams of CuS you could form. And you could find 27 grams of sulfur and, and see how many grams of CuS you could form. So a mass to mass problem starting with this and a mass to mass problem starting with this, both solving for product. If you do that, whichever one of these gives you less product is going to be the limiting reactant. And in doing that, it also often answers that question about how much of the excess reactant will remain. So, you know, just to write this out, 90 grams of Cu, we convert that into moles of Cu. Cu is 63.55 grams. We then convert from moles of Cu to moles of Cu2S that's our product, that's what we're uh, solving for. And in the balanced equation, uh, that's a, a two down here and a one here. And then one mole of Cu2S is some number of grams. Okay, so the molar mass on that, Cu is 63.55, and there's two of them. And then we have sulfur, which is 32.07. So this is... 159.17 grams per mole. So this will give us uh, grams of Cu2S. All right. Um, so let's see what we get. 90 divided by 63.55 is some number divided by 2, some number times 159.17 we get one, one, three approximately grams of Cu2S. So to react all the copper, that's how much Cu2S we could get in theory. Now to react all the sulfur, we're gonna do another mass to mass problem. 27 grams of sulfur, one mole of sulfur is 32.07 grams. Mole Cu2S is on top and mole of sulfur is on bottom. The equation is a one and a one. 
and then 159.17 grams over one mole Cu2s. And this also will give us grams of Cu2s. Okay? So if we do this one, let's uh, see what we have here. So 27 divided by 32.07, that gives us moles of sulfur. Times 1 over 1 is the same number, which is now moles of Cu2s, times 159.17, and we get 134 grams of Cu2s. So what I just did was I went from grams of Cu to grams of product, and I went from grams of sulfur to grams of product. Okay, now, whichever of the two gives you less is going to be the limiting reactant. This one is less. So what that means is, this is the copper, so what that means is Cu is limiting, right? Because we got less product with it. And this also answers that second question, how much product can be formed? What's the maximum amount of product that can be formed? This is the maximum amount of product that can be formed, the lesser of the two. So when you do two full mass-to-mass -mass problems like this, yes, you have to do two full mass-to-mass -mass problems, but it answers not only what the limiting reactant is, but it also answers the question, what is the maximum amount of product that can be formed, right? Because you had to solve it in the first place. Now, yes, doing this is doing two full mass-to-mass -mass problems, which is, you know, probably a little more than, you know, figuring out which is the limiting reactant and then doing a mass-to-mass -mass problem. But whatever is easiest for you, do that. Um, you know, at this point in the year, we spent a while doing limiting reactant. Um, and, you know, the most important thing is you understand that one of them is going to run out first. Whichever one runs out first is going to give you the amount of product that you can form, the maximum amount of product that you can form. And when you do it this way, whichever of the two is smaller is both the maximum amount of product that you can form and that element that you started with is going to be the limiting reactant. All right, this has been a video on the concept of limiting reactant stoichiometry. Hopefully you have found this helpful. Uh, keep studying, work, work, work. See you back in class.